በቤቶም ሆነ በመኪናው ወይም በማንኛውም ስፍራ ላይ ሆኖ ኢንተርኔት ስካሎ ድረስ ኢቢኤስ አብሮታለ በስልክ በታብሌት በኮምፒውተር በቴሌቪዥንም ሆነ በማንኛውም ኢንተርኔት መጠቀም የሚያስችል የመገናኛ መሳሪያ ላይ የኢቢኤስ ፕላስን የ24 ሰዓት ስርጭቶች ከኢትዮጵያ ውጭ በማንኛውም ሀገር መከታተል ይችላሉ። ኢቢኤስ ፕላስ ከአለም አቀፋይ ስርጭቱ በተጨማሪ የ24 ሰዓት ፊልምና ሙዚቃ ጣቢያዎችን አካቶ መጥቷል። ታዲያ እነዚህ ምርጥ 3 ጣቢያዎች ለማግኘት የሚጠበቅቦ በቀን 30 ሳንቲም የማይሞላ ማለትም ቦር 8 ዶላር ከ99 ሳንቲም ክፍያ ብቻ ነው። ለአመትም ከፈለጉ እንደሞ ሁለት ወሩን በነጻን ቻልሞታለን ምርጫው በስልክ አንድሮይድ ስማርትፎን ከሆነ Google Play Store ላይ EBS TV ብለው ይጻፉና ይፈልጉ ከዚያም ኢንስቶል በማድረግ EBS HD ወይም የEBS Plus የEBS Cinema የEBS ሙዚቃ ለ24 ሰዓት አማጣይ መልከቱ ሌላው ደግሞ በቀጥታ በቴሌቪዥን መስኮት ፕሮግራሞችን መከታተል ካሻው ኬብል ደና ሰንብት ካሰኝት የዘመኑ ቴክኖሎጂዎች አንዱ የሆኑ Google TV መጠቀም ይችላሉ። ያ Amazon ደረጃ ላይ ወይም በአቅራቢያው ባለ ኤሌክትሮኒክስ መሸጫ መደብር በመሄድ Google Boxን ማግኘት ይችላሉ። የGoogle Boxንም ከኢንተርኔት እና ከቲቪውት ጋር ካገናኙ በኋላ ቀሪው ስምና ያባለነት ክፍያውን መሙላትና መመልከት ብቻ ነው። እንግዲህ አሁን EBS በጆ ነው EBS የርሱ ነው የሚተሰቡ ተቀዳሚ ምርጫ what do you what do you see in in ethiopia and especially in 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 a revolution of you know tech and science what was your observation mindene yeah. ayeho and if you saw something that needs to be improved definitely there is so yeah. what's your advice what what was your observation what was your experience overall yeah i mean definitely well, from what i saw you know definitely there are many people passionate about you know about uh, it about uh, computer software um and i i have many friends you know aside from these activities I, i have many friends who live in ethiopia who are involved who are software engineers themselves um who have told me that uh, kind of I, ict has been like progressing in ethiopia the government now you know realizes you know, how important it is and um and many people are realizing how important it is and i i think that's that's very good um about you know what kinds of things might help it you know go forward more you know faster or further Um yeah so actually I asked you know I'm I'm in academia right I'm not um a lot of you know, a lot of kind of forward movement happens kind of in industry uh so I I started I asked a lot of my friends I have many friends involved in startups okay. um in industry uh I asked them you know what and all the startups that you've been involved in you know what did you see that that really helps things out one thing that I was told is uh well a friend of mine gave me a video to watch It was very interesting videos on YouTube. It's called uh, The Secret History of Silicon Valley. And it talks about you know, Silicon Valley, this is the tech center of the United States, right? And even in some senses, maybe not the, you know, the world maybe. It's like mm-hmm. one of the hottest uh, tech spots in the world. How did it get to be that way? And uh, you know, I recommend anyone who has access to watch this video. It's it's on it's on YouTube. What's the name again? So the that? Secret History of Silicon Valley. Okay. I think the speaker's name is Steve Blank. And kind of it all started I, I you know it's I'm not going to get into the whole thing cuz it's long yeah. but it kind of it all started with World War II and um the government realizing that hey there are all these smart people in academia maybe we can help them in our war efforts you know develop technology and that's really where it got started um and one of the people Terman who was was an academic who was at Stanford well he was at Stanford went to Harvard back to Stanford was really one of the key players in this and kind of when he was at stanford he started encouraging university faculty to also have their own businesses which back then i think was a very you know it was unheard of mm-hmm. um, when if you're an academic you're an academic you don't you don't have Can't a company mix. on the side yeah. you don't mix these things and he also made it very easy to to do licensing 
right? So um, one, you have to worry about you know protecting your your uh, your um, your IP pat patents, yeah. etc. You know exactly your IP. So he made that very easy. Um, and also, you know, what some of the things I saw in that video, um, you know, government support. So in um, 1958, this is now you know, decade and a half after the war, there was this. Um, is related to the Small Business Administration, which is a part of the government, where they provided, they did some matching of like seed funding. Okay. So for they really wanted to like kind of jumpstart the whole VC venture capital market of people investing into tech. One of the ways they did it is they said, look, for like private, you know, for private investments in these tech companies, you know, for every uh, dollar that you you invest, the government will match seed funding at some at some ratio, and and, and that uh, that really helped and um, kind of decreasing. So now, now we have these you know, capital gains. The tax rate went lower. Um, that really helped because people realized, hey, I can save on my taxes by investing. And so these kinds of things help. Um, also, things I was told, uh, mentorship, um, having access to people who've been through uh, you know, developing a company and getting tips from them. Um, internships. Um, internships help a lot. So. One suggestion one of my friends uh, said is, you know, can we somehow get a lot of companies with experience, big companies, to have some kind of presence in um, in Ethiopia, and you know, have Ethiopian students go and intern there yes. and, and learn from them. I think uh, Kenya is. Yeah, Kenya, Kenya, is, Kenya is taking is really, advantage of that because all right. the major companies, right. IBM, Google, Microsoft, big big offices there. Right. I think yeah, you are absolutely right. But right. if I mean that's yeah. beyond our control, though, right? So. Yeah. They, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess I don't know the. You know, I'm not a. I'm not a kind of a policy or anything person. I'm yes. a computer science academic. I don't know how to make these things happen. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I. But that would help. That would help if that. You know, if those things happened. Um, other things that uh, people have told me. So, um, one thing that I was told. So one thing that I was told is really helpful. Um, this is a, f a friend of mine who's uh, at, uh, he's a VP of engineering at Yelp actually. So okay. he oversees a lot of like hiring and he says, you know, one of the things that's really helpful is, you know, having kind of a well-recognized kind of feeder that, you know, basically uh, a program, a school or a program within a school that has a reputation for producing good students. So that when companies, you know, Ethiopian, let's say software companies, when they want to know like who should be hired, they know like kind of where to go. Um, I know we know, I guess, um, you know, we, People know what the schools are, I guess, in Addis Ababa. But um, other things, um, cutting down on red tape, making entrepreneurship very easy. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine who's been involved in many startups told me, kind of in California now, if you want to have a startup, um, you know, what's the paperwork involved? You go to a website and you click, you click a few things. That's, That's it. it. There's your startup. They make it yeah. so easy. They make it really easy. So um, kind of make the processes as efficient as possible. For, for to, IT startups. To, to encourage, to encourage um, entrepreneurship, to encourage startups. Wonderful. Yeah, I think those those. Would That's be very, fantastic. So yeah. again, something about Ethiopia. So I'm going to challenge you. Okay. So you're not Ethiopian. No, it's not. I'm African American. I'm Greek. I'm not African American. I'm not Greek. I'm not African American. When did you go to Ethiopia for the first time? And also, when did you start feeling the connection? Like, you know, you are half Ethiopian. Yeah. And your mom is Ethiopian. So. And then you have that blood, the mm. Ethiopian blood, right? So yeah. when did you start feeling that connection of let me explore my mom's, you know, homeland and, and whatnot? And then when did that start growing in you? And then yeah. when was the first time that you decided to pack in, let me go see Ethiopia? So when did you know when did I start you know connecting to my Was she nurturing you by the way about Ethiopia and everything? Not directly. Okay. But you know, it's interesting. I don't I don't know how I stumbled upon these things, but I remember even as a little kid. Um, I would ask my mom, I was curious, I would ask my mom lots of questions, how do you say this, how do you say that? Uh, I remember someone gave me, I don't remember who gave me, a, you know, a dictionary, English Amharic dictionary when I was a little kid and I would flip through it. And I also had the alphabet and I, I learned the alphabet actually when I was maybe, I don't know, seven or yeah? eight years old. So yeah. you, remember, you still remember it? Oh yeah, I can read and write, no, no problem. You can read and write, Amarinya? Yeah? yeah, I just, uh, my vocabulary is, is small, so. That's I, actually amazing. Is it? I don't yeah. necessarily know the word, you know, all the words I'm reading, like what they mean, but I can read it. I can, you know, I can pronounce what I'm reading. I can write, no problem too. But, um, so I, I was always connected even as a little kid and you know, when my mom, even in the house, you know, my mom is there, some relatives are there, or friends, I hear them speaking Amharic, and I, 
you know, I pick up some things here and there. They can't gossip about you, then. You know, my yeah, the, <laughs> usually I, I, I probably understand if I tried, <laughs> yeah. Um, but then the first time that we actually went, our whole family went, uh, me, my parents, my younger sister, that was 12, 12 years ago. I think it was June or July 2003. Uh, we went for almost a month. At that time, that was the first time my mom had ever returned to Ethiopia. Uh, she moved to the U.S. in 1972, I believe. So, you know, it was wow, long yeah, time ago. 41 years yeah. that she stayed in, in the U.S. before going back. So there were so many relatives that, you know, I, never, I had never met before. So many I had heard of them, but we had never seen each other face to face. So that whole trip, you know, I didn't really, we didn't really see the country very much. It was just, we go to one relative's house, we go to another relative's That's house. That's how it goes in Exactly, yeah. So <laughs> we're seeing lots and lots of relatives. And then, um, you know, at, at that time I was a student, so usually I was either in class or I had internships or something. But then when I became a grad student, you know, being a grad student, you're much more free. Your, your schedule is much more up to you. So in 2009, I went back again by myself and I stayed with my cousin, or my uncle, my uncle and cousins. And I also got to see a little more of the country. I traveled around, you know, I went to a lot of the uh, you know, famous tourist destinations like ancient civilization, yeah, right? Gondor, Lalibela, Aksum, uh, etc. Uh, so that was very, very nice. And then I went again in 2011. That's when I taught the, high, the class for high school students. Yeah. And at that point, I from then on, I started going often. Like you're still doing it? Yeah, I, I went in December. This December. December yeah. Wow, amazing. So, what is one thing that you can proudly talk about Ethiopia? I mean, the Bakurat and the Negus, little Mutenagar on the news. I mean, I, I love, I love um, the culture. I mean, uh, I guess one of the things I was mentioning is the Ingera, Ingera Ingera yeah. yeah, Yeah, I think that's something that's very, um, that doesn't, it doesn't exist everywhere, you know. It doesn't, I, I, I would say it exists in Ethiopia way, in a way stronger form than it does here. And that's one thing that I think is um, very nice. There are many things that I enjoy about it, yeah. But that's one that that's stands out to you. That's, yeah, many, What's your mother's name, by the way? Uh, Wubnesh. Wubnesh? Wubnesh, yeah. Wonderful. So, okay, let's talk about a little bit about yourself now, okay? Uh, yeah, I know yeah. you're you a nerd and, you know, uh, <laughs> people think you just, you know, lecture and 24-7, but might not be the case. So, what's your hobby? When you're not working, when you're not coding and studying, yeah. whatnot. Yeah. What do you want to do? What do, what do you love doing? Sure. Well, actually, I mean, so one, one thing I love doing, but it's, it's work-related, I love doing research. <laughs> network with, network with <laughs> this time, <laughs> yeah, if there's uh, any. <laughs> yeah, no, I have, I have hobbies aside from work. But you're going to laugh at my hobbies, too. So one of my hobbies that I used to do a lot were programming competitions. That's, that's that, still related. So. That's not work. It's not work, because actually, you know, the research I do is That more does not involve a computer or algorithm. Okay, how about that? That does not involve algorithm. <laughs> okay. Um, I really love board games, card games. <laughs> okay. Card, card, card uh, okay, games. Karta. Right? Okay, yeah. better. Okay. So, actually, but not just, probably not even just the standard ones, but really kind of lots of different games, especially German style board games. I don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with these. No, I'm not. So, I mean, I guess the, you know, one of the most famous German style board games is a game called Settlers of Catan. But um, even aside from that, there are a lot of other games in that genre that I really like to play. Um, there's a game that I play a lot. It's a card game, but it has its own deck called Dominion. Um, I play that a lot with my roommate. Um, I'm sure that involves a lot of algorithm in your mind, so that's why you like it. <laughs> <Maybe. right>? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, somehow algorithms are everywhere. I yeah, can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's your hobby. Are you an outdoor Definitely. person? Well, are person? you an outdoor person? Outdoor person. Yeah. Mm. Not, I, I, I do I do travel a lot, I guess. Yeah. And I, I like to see places. Okay. So that you know, when, maybe yeah. So when I'm out but outdoors meaning like I walk around and see, you know, sights. Okay. Sports, I don't do a whole lot of sports. I used to watch a lot of Starcraft on Korean television. That's it? No <laughs> no football, no soccer? Uh, I watched the World Cup a lot last year. Okay. But that how did you how did you find it? You like it? How is it? Um, yeah, it was fun. Uh, I mean, I honestly, I haven't. I'm not so into sports. Sports, but you know, it was fun to watch. All right. I watched, um, you know, Ethiopia versus Nigeria. There that was go. very exciting. <laughs> Everybody was messed uh, <laughs> up for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, wonderful.
በቤቶም ሆነ በመኪናው ወይም በማንኛውም ስፍራ ላይ ሆነው ኢንተርኔት ስካሎድ ድረስ ኢቢኤስ ሳብሮት አለ በስልክ በታብሌት በኮምፒውተር በቴሌቪዥንም ሆነ በማንኛውም ኢንተርኔት መጠቀም የሚያስችል የመገናኛ መሳሪያ ላይ የኢቢኤስ ፕላስን የ24 ሰዓት ስርጭቶች ከኢትዮጵያ ውጭ በማንኛውም ሀገር መከታተል ይችላሉ ኢቢኤስ ፕላስ ከአለም አቀፋይ ስርጭቱ በተጨማሪ የ24 ሰዓት ፊልምና ሙዚቃ ጣቢያዎችን አካቶ መጥቷል ታዲያ እነዚህ ምርጥ 3 ጣቢያዎች ለማግኘት የሚጠበቅቦ በቀን 30 ሳንቲም የማይሞላ ማለትም ቦር 8 ዶላር ከ99 ሳንቲም ክፍያ ብቻ ነው ለአመትም ከፈለጉ እንደሞ ሁለት ወሩን በነጻ እንጨልሞታለን ምርጫው በስልክ አንድሮይድ ስማርትፎን ከሆነ Google Play Store ላይ EBS TV ብለው ይጻፉና ይፈልጉ ከዚያም ኢንስታል በማድረግ EBS HD ወይም የEBS Plus የEBS Cinema የEBS ሙዚቃ ለ24 ሰዓት አማርጣ ይመልከቱ ሌላው ደግሞ በቀጥታ በቴሌቪዥን መስኮት ፕሮግራሞችን መከታተል ካሻው ኬብል ደና ሰንብት ካሰኙት የዘመኑ ቴክኖሎጂዎች አንዱ የሆነው Google TV መጠቀም ይችላሉ የአማዞን ደረጃ ላይ ወይም በአቅራቢያው ባለ ኤሌክትሮኒክስ መሸጫ መደብር በመሄድ Google Boxን ማግኘት ይችላሉ የGoogle Boxንም ከኢንተርኔትና ከቲቪው ጋር ካገናኙ በኋላ ቀሪው ስምና የአባልነት ክፍያውን መሙላትና መመልከት ብቻ ነው እንግዲህ አሁን EBS በጆ ነው EBS የርሱን ነው የሚተሰቡ ተቀዳሚ ምርጫ My next question is if you have remember any incident in the past in your life it can be something very joyful it can be something that's uh, sad or that changed you that changed your perspective in life and what not so do you recall any incident yeah. in your life so there there are some i guess one that one that i can say that's related to um you know computer science math is when i started at MIT so i mentioned I was kind of clueless in high school and that I you know I didn't even know what MIT was. I didn't know I didn't know many things. Um and when I got to MIT, I didn't really know you know I I I I had taken math classes of course in high school and my whole life, but I didn't really know what a mathematician does. You know like what is a professional mathematician? What does it mean to major in math? What are you learning? And I didn't really have a good sense of what mathematical proofs were. And that's a big part of math or proofs. So I remember growing up I used to take you know the honors version of classes. So when I got to MIT and there were many different first year math classes depending on your level. So if you if you didn't feel very comfortable with math they had like an easier version and then if you if you felt like you were very you know good at math you could take the the hardest version. There there are many levels that maybe you know four levels something like that. So not really knowing what any of the levels meant I um signed up for like kind of the most extreme version of the toughest the toughest yeah. yeah yeah the toughest uh, intro math and then what happened and you know in a class of 1000 um so the entering class at MIT is 1000 every year so out of that 1000 the number of people who took this kind of hardest intro level math it was something like 30 <laughs> so and, and when i looked around the room you know there were people who had represented their country in math olympics Like so there's this inter- uh, IMO it's called International Math Olympiad. So there was a gold medalist from China. It was like one of, you know, one of six people China sent to represent China <laughs> in math. Or something. I'm adding there, you know, <laughs> billion plus people. There were people from everywhere, you know, China, Mexico, Bulgaria, Colombia, the US, everywhere, like countries from all over from all over the place. And kind of the best people some of the best people from those countries were, you know, in this class and I didn't have nearly the level of experience that they had. Um, and I remember the kind of the first uh, you know one of the first classes that we had for that class, like in the classroom. The teacher went over, the professor he went over um, a proof that the square root of two is irrational, which you know some mathematical fact. And for I think all the other people in the class, that was a big basic to them. They, they they were probably like, oh, you know, I learned this when I was you know eight years old or something, you know. But for me it was very new because I hadn't been exposed to this kind of, you know, math rigorous mathematics before and I found it, you know, very interesting and exciting. And, you know, I I realized just how much I didn't know. And a lot of the students around me knew a lot more just from their backgrounds. Um I have two things played in my favor. One is that, you know, my my peers, the fellow students, even you know, they're very smart but they're also very friendly. So I used to ask them lots of questions. because I wanted to I wanted to know what they knew. 
um, and, and I spent a lot of time asking questions and they answered me, that was great. And another thing that really helped me, um, at that time, the way MIT grading worked, your entire first year of university, you don't get grades. You either, like for every class, you get a pass or, or, a, fail. or, or a fail, or they called it no record, it doesn't, like, it doesn't count. Um, so you don't really have to worry about A, B, or C. As long as you get any passing grade, it's a pass. It's more progress, yeah. Yeah, so I, did, I had no stress related to grades. I was just trying to absorb as much material as I could in that first year. And that, I was really, I'm really grateful that they had that kind of grading system because you know, by the time the second year came, that year was enough to help me you know, catch up to what I, the background that I you know, didn't have. Wonderful. Yeah. That's amazing. So uh, my, my, we only have a couple of questions now. So uh, you have achieved a lot academically, and you are, you are you know, you're a professor at one of the finest schools. So I should ask, who's a your role model? So man no bazi here, success, and the first influence you have, who's your role model? My role model? Um, it can be people, it can be ideal, it can be a book, it can be anyone. It can right. be yeah, it's funny. You know, I never. You know, when it comes to when it comes to you know academics, um, I never really, I never really had you know kind of a role model in the sense that it wasn't really you know aspiring to to be like you know someone else who had mm -hmm. achieved some kind of academic success was never really my motivation. You know, I I just really enjoyed math kind of inherently. Like I just loved math, I loved computer science, and I just wanted to pursue it because it was fun. To me it was like a game, you know, it's like why do you, you know, why do you play this game? It's just, I, I like it. Um, but, you know, some of my role models, usually it's like, I usually choose role models, I guess, based on kind of people who I think have um, good character, good, you know, humility, have good, uh, um, kind of personality, and they're like role models for me. Who I, I want to have, you know, uh, you know, have kind of behavior. Was behavior Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. In that in that way, but in you know, way. it's completely. It's compl sorry. And from that angle, who's your role, role from, model? From that angle, you know, there. I always say I don't know. Um, like I have, there are two cousins of mine <laughs> who I, <laughs> I just really love their uh, kind of. Behavior. So you have two cousins <laughs> who are your role models. Yeah, that's, you can that's very cool. <laughs> you can say that, I guess. Um, yeah. Are they younger, older? Like your cousins? Uh, like early thirties. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's They're around my age. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, um, but uh, when it comes to academics, though, I mean, I do have other people who I really admire. Um, because I really like, for example, I really like re, you know computer science research algorithms, right? So there are some algorithms researchers out there who I you know I really love love their work. It's like if you if you like to read books, you have a favorite author, right? So I love algorithms. I have you know some favorite algorithms people yeah. who I really like. I really love their work. There are people like that. Definitely makes sense. I'm coming to my final question, which is not a question. Okay. It, it <laughs> yeah. is just to say you can say anything. So. This is your this is your time. You can you can you can cover any topic before we wrap up our, our interview. So I'll I will let you be. Okay. Uh, well, thanks again for inviting me here. Um, yeah. Any topic, you know. I guess I'll just I'll go back to you know just repeating and stressing something I said earlier, which I think is um, very was very influential for me, which is that idea of like self training. Um, where so you know you said you didn't want me to mention hobbies that were programming related, but there was a point. There was a summer actually. I remember when I was an undergrad. There was a summer where I spent almost all day every day just doing problems. I mean, maybe eight hours a day. I was just going online, finding algorithms, problems, and solving them. Um, and that really, I mean, I, I I didn't see it as studying or as as work. I saw it as um, fun. I mean, I saw it as learning new things and you know mastering something. Um, and there was some competitive aspect to it. I mentioned that um, there were some competitions that revolved around these problems on places on websites like Top Coder. But yeah, I mean that that to me was a really you know good experience. I think 
um, when I was younger that really uh, got me into algorithms and, and really trained me very well for it, I guess. That's <laughs> all I think you have to show that key is self self training, self discipline. Ini kerja balas untuk teratur rezeki yang baik amal itu. Nah, jalan ini kerja itu terina kepada zidras mata life hun, ya akademik, profesional, and personal life huni itu. Acha ada kerja zidras mula tamal kajo cacing. Anda ada timur dan dua stu selada rek. Betul awak memang segera betul tamal kajo cie sem. On behalf of my viewers, I really, really would like to say thank you very much for coming. He just came from a flight actually from Boston. And just straight to the studio for interview. So uh, I really, really want to appreciate uh, you doing this because I, 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 I believe in, I, I know for sure that people will be inspired by your path and uh, you know, follow suit. So thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jalani Nelson Guide, Dr. He was too again the Tamara Chu Tasvaragalo. I know Buzu conversation almost hulum the suicide. بنگلیز نیانی نبرو گریهیا یا لغویش من اگر آمارنیا بزوم سلام مایچل بزایت هنرسانون دزایر رگنو نگر گندال کوچو به آناتو تو پیامی با بابت تو کل آمریکایی هنو و که ایلی تو پیارم و بزوم فکر آلو یه راهون او کاتون بنزا با آمد آن دیوی هولتی یه را شیری آر رگالی از کل تماریو چن کامپیوتر پروگرامینگ یاستم رال لبزو چرا مسکولاش پنیم دمیک کی منگرونی اسای یا چوال نه یه را بات آم بات آم دس میل بات آم دس میل مگبار نو لذام نو به زینگ دایم تو هنو دیچ آوتی فلکوس بزرگ چه چرمار دی سواسی مدت آیا چوته ولی موزاری که نیگا به استودیو هنر ایتاد چوته گری بزرگ اگر دتام آرش تصفار گالو سامنت بایلا پروگرام نمود ابک آچو استایتو چه چون دتام مدت بس فلینی رش سیگنال به فیس بک پیج لایم بت بت مدت اونا این باکس پارو این تاگین یال آچو سپشیلی افیشال پیج لایک کار را گالو یعنی این پروگرام بس داره برم مکرر داده شلو آچو من دم ماکر اند اند یه توی تکنولوژی تو آپی کوچنیم استارس پوست داره گالو مالاتنو سامنت بایلا پروگرام